Microsoft Flight Simulator just hit Alpha version 3. The Boeing 747-8i is now playable, and Asobo discussed their work on the SDK. These are just a few of the updates for the sim this week, so let's jump right in and take a closer look at each of these. Now, one of the things that I've been most interested in hearing about is the software development kit. The reason for that is pretty simple. Any details on this give us some insight into what the third-party developers are working on. The update this week on the SDK, though, was pretty light on details, unfortunately, but there are a few snippets here that are well worth taking a look at. Firstly, Microsoft claim they are in contact with 200 companies and over 400 developers. Of course, that doesn't mean they are actively working with that many people, but the potential is certainly there. But what type of third-party content can we expect? Well, the update briefly touches on this. Firstly, whilst the flight simulator contains every airport in the world, not all of them are going to be fully realised. Currently, 80 airports will be fully detailed and match their real-world counterparts. Many, however, will be generic or procedurally generated in some way. Third parties will, as with many other flight sims, be offering fully detailed airports to replace specific generic ones. The new SDK update will allow for custom aerial imagery, custom painted lines within airports, and will also allow developers to import and use their own assets. Aircraft will of course also be available from third parties, and again with extensive ability to customise. I suspect at this point that if you're curious as to what type of aircraft will be available, then we only need to take a look at other flight sims out there. They often have a wide range of additional planes and other aircraft available after all. So right now, as I said, the details are very light on the SDK, but it does go to show that Microsoft are planning on a lot of support for this sim. Now, Alpha version 3 was also released this week. The headline feature for this update, of course, is the release of the Boeing 747. It does immediately come with a number of problems and issues, however, but this is entirely natural with it being an Alpha, so these things do need to be tested, and bugs and issues are certainly to be expected. Currently, Sobo lists a total of 53 problems with the 747 that they need to address, and these range from the graphics issues, instrument display problems, as well as light manage uh, flight rather, management bugs. Sobo have stated that they are in the process of fixing these, and really, this just goes to highlight how complex planes are in simulators. One of the previous Alpha updates saw the release of the Airbus A320, which itself had numerous problems upon release, and a lot of these things uh, have now been fixed in the latest Alpha, at 27 fixes in fact. The update also contains fixes, improvements and changes to many of the other aircraft in the sim, and additionally, there's a bunch of stability fixes that have gone in as well. At the bottom of the patch notes, there's a list of currently known issues, and those of you with Alpha Access, uh, well, may currently well be aware of these. Uh, for example, there's three separate entries for frame rate problems, and these can be especially notable when using the external camera. Now, if you want to delete the patch notes, they're available as a link in the video description. Meanwhile, Sobo attached the current development roadmap to the update, and this shows no changes to what they previously showed. And this means they are still on track for releasing a closed beta in mid-July. The partnership updates are still on track for June. And of course, next week, there will be the latest Discovery Series update. Sobo also go on to mention that they are putting out more alpha invites. In fact, this time around, I'm hearing from a number of friends and contacts that they now have access. To be honest, it's always difficult to judge just how many people do have access to the alpha as the NDA is very strict. Whilst it does allow people to reveal whether or not they do have access, it doesn't allow people to discuss the specifics or indeed anything at all about the sim. It sometimes seems to me that people here are erring on the side of caution and sometimes not even mentioning whether or not they actually have access. Overall though, the impression I get is that the Sobo Studios are certainly ramping up the number of people who have invites. That said, I still hear from a lot of people who don't have access, despite the fact that they applied for access on day one. So whilst the NDA it does bind people very, very tightly, looking through the comments, both on my recent videos, as well as on the internet in general, there's a few hints as to what is and isn't going on within the alpha, and it's an interesting subject to read about. The same holds true right across the internet, actually, whether you read on the various forums or even the Reddit sub. 
Now, whilst it's rare to see anyone talk about specifics, it's becoming increasingly common to hear people discuss their own personal impressions based upon their experiences within the Alpha. Mostly, it seems to be very positive, but there's also an element of mixed feelings. But it is the internet after all, so a wide range of opinions are to be expected, and these jump from a Microsoft Flight Simulator is everything Microsoft are suggesting to the opposite extreme, that this is a flight simulator for gamers, not for simmers. My own advice on all of this, as yes, I do have access to the Alpha and have had so for a long while, is to wait and see. Don't rush to judgment. And basically, don't let other people make your mind up for you. As with any highly anticipated game, there's a lot of hype. But there's also a small number of very vocal people who are ready to tear things down or who are entrenched within their own worldviews for a variety of different reasons. So, what am I saying here? Well, bottom line, make up your own minds. But there's good reason to have high expectations for this release. It's doing a lot of things that have never been done before. Flight Simulator will be a game changer, there's no two ways about that. But also, as with every game in all of history, it's worth keeping expectations and hype in check. And this doesn't go for just the new Flight Simulator, but also for all upcoming highly anticipated releases, such as Cyberpunk 2077 for example. All that said and done though, personally I'm still super keen and excited for all of this. From what we have been shown so far, Flight Simulator has a ton to offer and is going to be very, very good indeed. As always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.